In this lesson, we're going to learn about different concepts and tools we can use when programming LabVIEW. Let's begin talking about the cursor feature in LabVIEW by examining a knob on our front panel. From the Controls palette, place a knob anywhere on your front panel. Notice how when you hover over the different elements of the knob, the cursor changes. This is called the Automatic Tool Selector. When the Automatic Tool Selector is enabled, LabVIEW automatically detects what our cursor is hovering over and changes the cursor to the tool we are most likely to require when our cursor is over that point. For example, hovering over the scale will produce a text editor which we can use to adjust the scale or edit text. Or we can hover over the corners of the knob. This will bring up a pointer which can be used to resize the control. Automatic Tool Selection can be disabled by clicking on View and then Tools Palette. Then click on the box next to the wrench and screwdriver in the Tools Palette. However, leaving the Automatic Tool Selector enabled is a personal preference of most programmers and is highly suggested because it saves the programmer valuable time. Another useful feature of LabVIEW that will certainly come in handy is the Context Help menu. To access the Context Help window, we select the Help menu in the toolbar and click on Context Help. This can also be done by pressing Ctrl H or clicking on the question mark icon at the top right of the front panel or block diagram. This will display a small window on our screen. The context help gives us all the information about whatever the cursor is hovering over. As we'll see in later lessons, the context help is going to assist with functions that have inputs and outputs to remind us of which terminal is which. The context help will feature a detailed help link which we can click on to get a more thorough explanation of whatever it is we are hovering over. So far we have placed a control on the front panel. Let's also place an indicator. To place an indicator, we right-click anywhere on the front panel and choose any of the indicators. Let's choose meter. The two items we have on our block diagram, the knob and meter, are called terminals. We see that there is a triangle on the knob control terminal and it's pointing away from the terminal on the right-hand side. On the meter indicator though, the triangle is pointing towards the terminal on the left-hand side. This can help us identify which of these terminals are controls or indicators. If we hover over the triangle on the knob terminal, we notice our cursor changes to a spool of wire. If we click once, we start our wire and then go to the triangle of the meter and click once more. We see that it connects the two terminals together with a wire. To delete a wire, we hover over it until the cursor turns into a pointer. We click once to select a portion of the wire and then press delete on our keyboard. If we ever accidentally click the triangle on a terminal and a wire begins to get drawn, we can right click or press escape on our keyboard and it will stop drawing that wire. If we are in the middle of drawing a wire, we can press the spacebar to toggle between different paths the wire would take. We can also force the wire to take a specific path after we have initiated the wire from a terminal's triangle. Click once anywhere on the block diagram to pin the wire down. We can repeat this as many times as required to define the path we want the wire to take before getting to its destination. After placing a wire, if we're not happy with its placement, we can use the Clean Up Wire option. To do that, we right-click on the wire and select Clean Up Wire. LabVIEW will automatically choose the shortest path for the wire to take. If we do not like the route that LabVIEW has chosen, we can always undo the action by pressing Ctrl Z. We can also use the cleanup tool to neatly align all our elements in the block diagram. Highlight the portion of code you wish to clean up and then click Edit. Now click Clean Up Diagram. Now we have a basic piece of code. How do we execute it? To run our program, click on the arrow icon located near the top left corner of the block diagram or the front panel. Our code is executed. Let's move over to the front panel and move the knob. Now press the Run button. As you can see, the meter changed to match the knob. However, what can we do if we want to record the knob value continuously? One way is to press the Run Continuously button located beside the Run button. This can act like a loop. To stop the program, press the Abort button located beside the Run Continuously button, or press the Run Continuously button again. In this lesson, we learned about the automatic tool selector. We also talked about what controls and indicators are. Finally, we learned how to wire terminals together and clean up our block diagram.